Morning Liberty. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Nate with Good Morning Liberty, and we're going to do a quick history lesson in under five minutes. So here we go. This is on the Weimar Republic, which was the unofficial historical designation for Germany from 1918 to 1933. The Weimar Republic had some of the most serious economic problems ever experienced by any Western democracy in history. Rampant hyperinflation, massive unemployment, and a large drop in living standards were the primary factors. At the beginning of 1920, 50 marks was equivalent to one U.S. dollar. By the end of 1923, only three years later, 4.2 trillion marks was equivalent to one U.S. dollar. An entire life savings was not enough to buy a loaf of bread. Princeton historian Harold James argues that there was a clear link between economic decline and people turning to extremist politics. During the Weimar Republic, it was accepted that a law did not have to conform to the German constitution as long as it had the support of two-thirds of parliament. The career choices for German Jews differ greatly from the general population. Historically prohibited from many professional endeavors, Jews were disproportionately represented in some areas of the economy, such as law, medicine, or retailing. Under the Weimar Republic, German Jews played a major role in politics and diplomacy for the first time in their history, and they strengthened their position in financial, economic, and cultural affairs. Already by 1914, the Jews were well represented among the wealthy, including 24% of the richest men in Prussia and 8% of the university students, although making up only 1% of the population. There was sporadic anti-Semitism based on the false allegation that wartime Germany had been betrayed by an enemy within. There was some violence against German Jews in the early years of the Weimar Republic. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion was a forgery which claimed that Jews were taking over the world, and it was widely circulated. In 1933, persecution of Jews became an act of Nazi policy, but at first, laws were not as rigorously obeyed or as devastatingly as in later years. Such clauses, known as Aryan paragraphs, had been postulated previously by anti-Semitism and enacted in many private organizations. The continuing and exacerbating abuse of Jews in Germany triggered calls throughout March 1933 by Jewish leaders around the world for a boycott of German products. The Nazis responded with further bans on boycotts against Jewish doctors, shops, lawyers, and stores. The Law for the Restoration of the Professional Civil Service was passed, banning Jews from being employed in government. This law meant that Jews were now indirectly and directly dissuaded or banned from privileged and upper-level positions reserved for Aryan Germans. With the majority of non-Jewish professors holding such feelings about Jews, coupled with how the Nazis outwardly appeared in the period during and after the seizure of power, there was little motivation to oppose the anti-Jewish measures being enacted. Few did, and in fact many were actively in favor. In May 1935, Jews were forbidden to join the armed forces. In that year, anti-Jewish propaganda appeared in Nazi German shops and restaurants. In 1936, Jews were banned from all professional jobs, effectively preventing them from exerting any influence in education, politics, higher education, and industry. Because of this, there was nothing to stop the anti-Jewish actions, which spread across the Nazi German economy. By April 1939, nearly all Jewish companies had either collapsed under financial pressure and declining profits, or had been forced to sell out to the Nazi German government. The SS ordered the Night of Broken Glass to be carried out November 9th through 10th in 1938. The storefronts of Jewish shops and offices were smashed and vandalized, and many synagogues were destroyed by fire. Many Germans were disgusted by this action when the full extent of the damage was discovered, so Hitler ordered that it be blamed on the Jews. Collectively, the Jews were made to pay back one billion Reichsmark in damages, the fine being raised by confiscating 20% of every Jewish property. The Jews also had to repair their damages at their own cost. 
That's all what happened before the Holocaust. It is rarely discussed. The indebted German government printed money, leading to hyperinflation. When the population suffered, the government blamed the bankers, lawyers, doctors, and store owners. Turns out, human instincts are the same no matter what year it is or what country they are in.